Okay, you have to check this out. This is a 1968 Dodge Dart. Uh, it started life with a 318 in it, but that's not what's here now. Uh, this thing is so unique. I, I mean, I just love this thing. I drove it for a couple days, and it does absolutely nothing wrong except get you in trouble. Um, the car is fantastic. It has a Hypo 440 in it. has an Edelbrock uh, Torker uh, single-plane intake manifold on it, a Holley double-pump carburetor, the uh, original equipment Presto-Lite distributor that came with it with a set of high silicone plug wires. Vacuum Advance is still hooked up and operational on it. Uh, it has a dual feed on it, Holly too, I forgot to mention. It has a set of Mopar aluminum valve pan covers. Um, a huge set of two inch ceramic coated headers on it. These, this thing is just as nice and fresh a build as you'd ever hope to find. Chrome plated alternator, which is also brand new. New water pump. And uh, I got to mention this, it definitely has a nice set of aluminum high flow cylinder heads on it. This is not just a standard iron head 440 that was pulled out and put in this car. Uh, the motor is built. It has a relatively mild cam in it. It's not wildly cammed up or anything. It is an automatic transmission car. Um, it does not have power steering, but it doesn't really need it. This engine doesn't have a whole lot of weight on the nose of this thing. And the, the tires are just a conventional set of 14-inch uh, 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 radials that are on the front of it on um, rally wheels, which we'll see here shortly. It has a dual-stage master cylinder on it. Um, Dual snorkel air cleaner that's really unique, an old uh, Chrysler type air cleaner, four barrel 440 designation on it. And check this out, air conditioning. This thing has air conditioning too. Um, hooked up to the passenger compartment, all new hoses, all new lines, and it still retains its heater hoses also. So you have heat and air in case this thing would happen to go to one of the northern states or really any state that you might need some uh, heat at some point of its life. A huge, and I don't need, I'm going to call it a four pass, but I don't know, it might even be more than that. It's a huge high flow, it's at least a 26 inch wide uh, uh, radiator on the front end of this thing. Uh, correct style hoses, top and bottom, seven blade fixed fan on it, not a clutch fan. Uh, I think they only put a new battery in it. Um, New air conditioning condenser in the front, and in front of that, about three inches in front of that, there is a transmission oil cooler on it also, because this guy is an uh, um, automatic transmission car. The engine compartment is just as clean and fresh as you would ever hope to find. You can see that this is a, a fresh build. The paint on it is just exemplary. <clears throat> it cannot get any nicer than it is. There's no leaks whatsoever on the uh, valve pan covers or the front of the engine. Um, Geez, I can't, I can't see a single thing uh, that is out of place on this thing. It's as fresh and clean an engine compartment as you could ever, ever hope to find. Um, hood pad on it uh, for a little bit of isolation so it doesn't uh, hurt the paint from the heat from the engine. Uh, helps quiet it down a little bit too. This thing is an absolute total rust-free body. There's absolutely no deterioration whatsoever anywhere on this car. Like I say, I used it for a couple of days and it's an absolute hoot to drive. This thing's a lot of fun. Um, very high, high quality vehicle. <clears throat> it's not just a standard paint job. We're going to go over that here in a second, but uh, it, it, it just has a lot of amenities to it. It's just a fantastic, fantastic build. Uh, someone has put a lot of work and a lot of time into uh, uh, all the detail under this, uh, under this hood and this engine compartment. Fantastic 440 high po motor in a little car. We'll show you the rest of it. Hi, you're at Hangsters in Daytona Beach, Florida. And today we're going to present to you a really unique car. It's not a uh, highly priced vehicle, but it's like one of my very favorite cars to drive. This thing's an absolute boot. Uh, we're going to go over it and show you all the, uh, if we can find any imperfections in it. Um, and then do the undercarriage. We're going to do total presentation, so you're going to see everything you need to see about this vehicle. Hood gap, as you can see, it's about an eighth of an inch the whole way around. Really precise fitment. Look at the way this lines up. Look at the way everything lines up on this car. Eighth of an inch the whole way down and across the back. This is not a driver quality paint job on this car. It feels like silk. It's, uh, it's white. 
has a lot of depth to it. There's no imperfections in it that I can detect. Uh, it's just a, an absolute show quality paint job on a laser straight, rust free 1968 Dodge Dart. GTS de designation on the front. The chrome uh, louvers on the sides are absolutely uh, patina free and just as nice and fresh as they were the day they were new. Um, the grill itself. Uh, again, I'm going to show you on the front here everything, the anodized aluminum trim that goes around. There's no dents or deviations or uh, deterioration whatsoever to it. And it kind of carries around to the headlight buckets and the grill, which also is the same way. It's aluminum. It's not plastic. Um, just as fresh and clean as you could ever hope to find. There's no dents or anything from stones being thrown up through the years. Uh, argent finish over here where it should be. This is polished. Um, I think this is supposed to be argent, or for whatever reason they have a polished aluminum here instead of being argent. This argent should carry across here if I remember correctly. It's been a few years though. <laughs> um, parking lights just the way they should be, nice and clean and clear. The chrome on the bumper is absolutely flawless. Let's check the fitment here. And bumper fitment is spot on, absolutely spot on. And you can see that no one's put their feet up over the bumper through the years. There's no uh, scratches or scrapes or scuffs on the bumper. There's no dinghies in the front that I can feel at all. So the chrome bumper is just as fresh and clean as the rest of the front end of this car. Uh, there's no deterioration again on that grill area at all. Absolutely none. Um, marks on the front bumper, none. The front end of this car is just laser straight as far as alignment goes. There's just no way you could fit it any better. And again, the, uh, the paint on this car is just absolutely flawless. It's just absolutely beautiful. I don't know how else to describe it. And the fit and finish on this car is just, it, it's not what you would expect to find on a little Dodge Dart. Let's go down the side and see what it looks like there. Okay, driver's side of our Dart GTS style 440 car. Uh, side marker light, no patina whatsoever. These do light up, by the way, 68. Uh, trim around the uh, wheel lip. Absolutely no dinghies whatsoever. All tin everywhere on this car, too. You'll see that on the undercarriage presentation. GTS 440 designation on the side. Again, look at the fitment of this thing. Look at the fender to the, the cowl area, to the hood, to the door, to the rocker panel. It can't get any better. This is it. It's just as nice as you'd ever hope to find. Correct wiper arms and blades. Uh, the original Vintag still nice and legible. Chrysler designation on it yet still nice and clear. Correct six-sided rivets uh, holding it in place. Trim around the front window. No marks at all. Absolutely none. The dash pad that's on this car, there's no distortions, uh, no warpage whatsoever, and no cracks. I don't see anything. We'll get a better look once we're inside, but from out here, you don't see any cracks at all on it. The metal part of the dashboard transitions to the base of the windshield as clear as it was the day this car left the factory in 1968. Just as fresh and clean as can be. Windshield is a sunshade fade tinted windshield on it. It's just as fresh and clean. There's no wiper marks whatsoever on it. Uh, just as, it's just as new as it was in 1968. Ah, uh, see here, no patino on this guy either. Look at this. Usually these things are kind of corroded up a little bit, uh, the chrome on these uh, uh, wing uh, enclosures. And this one has absolutely none. The roof is the same as the wood, it's just a wet glass. And it's, it's a white, snow white color on this car, and it's just as fresh and clean looking, and there's no distortions, there's no warpage, there's no marks, scuffs, nothing. Uh, a drip rail, nothing, absolutely no marks whatsoever, no dinghies, tinted glass on the side windows, remote mirror, and absolutely like new, no marks whatsoever on it, uh, no patina, and it is a remote mirror. Wipes whiskers, absolutely new, little Dodge Super B designation here on the side of it they added. Look at the window fitment. The, uh, door glass to the uh, rear quarter glass. Look, precise fitment. It can't get any better than that. It just can't. The uh, door handle crumbs that deep in it. Fitment of the door to the quarter. Look at this. 
to the rocker. Look. And look at the gap, too. You can see the gap on it, too. I'm telling you, this thing is... Somebody spent a lot of time fitting this car. A lot of time. Sail panel, no marks or no imperfections whatsoever in it. Trim around the back window. Flaws. Hat, shelf, rack, tray, whatever you want to call it. The uh, speaker um, uh, perforations are still nice and clean and clear, as is the finish on the tray itself. And it's an original equipment tray. You can see that. Uh, and there's no fading or distortion or uh, pieces missing in the uh, uh, speaker vents themselves. Just as fresh and clean as it was when it was new. Trim around the back wheel and also tin everywhere on this car. It's all tin. There's no Bondo. It's this thing is just totally as fresh a car as you'd ever hope to find. There are absolutely no imperfections in the paint. GT Sport, that's GTS. Uh, designation on the back, nice black stripe to set this guy off. It has a black interior, uh, black trim on it, and a black GT Sport stripe on it. Really gives it a nice pop. Again, no patina whatsoever around the side marker light. Of course, that's going to be amber up there, so it's going to be red back here. 14-inch um, rally wheels and trim rings on a nice fresh set of radials on it. Um, Everybody's preference, either this or a uh, Kelsey Hayes wheel. That's what everybody wants to see on a Mopar. Uh, rally wheels kind of really set this thing off. It really uh, has a nice look to it with the rally wheel trim rings and the uh, centers and everything, argent centers, uh, black wall tires. If it had white walls, that might, or white walls, white letters, it might set it off a little bit more, but it looks great just the way it is. Side of this car is just laser straight. I mean, when you look down the side of it, again, you, there's, there's no doors on it until you get about, about here. You can see a mark here. I still can't see the front one. So the alignment and the, the finish and fit and everything down the driver's side of this handle hood is precise. It can't be any better than it is. Let's see if we can find something for you on the back. Okay, this is the rear section of our 68 uh, GTS style, 440 dart. Again, look at the trim on this thing, the fit. Eighth of an inch the whole way around, and look at the trim fitment, look. Absolutely unbelievable GPS designation, just the way it should be. Our black stripe has a lot of pop to it. And again, I wish you could see the paint on this thing. It's just, I can't believe that there's this much of a fit and finish on a, uh, on a Dodge Dart. Chrome around the, uh, and this is chrome, this is anodized aluminum, this is chrome. Uh, around the uh, tail light assemblies, absolutely no patina, nice fresh lenses in it. These guys are absolutely brand new as they were when they left the factory in 1968. Same thing on this side. Nice fitment, everything just the way it should be. Nice black accents to coincide with the other black accents on the car, plus the black wall tires. It makes it, it kind of makes it, gives it a, a nice contrast uh, with the white. You don't want to have too much white, but uh, again, the black stripe, black across here. Uh, bumper fitment. Somebody had to spend a lot of time on this thing. They had to. I mean, that, that is as precise a bumper fitment as you could get. And again, nobody put their feet up on it. Nobody scuffed anything up on the bumper. The chrome is absolutely flawless and it appears to be that deep. I don't know, let me see for... A lot of times I can't see it, but I can feel it if I run my hands over it. That's why I kind of try to feel this car everywhere. Uh, I might not see a dent or a ding, but I can feel it, especially on a white car. And this one so far, we've found nothing. Uh, the correct style exhaust extensions out the back. Um, and that bumper, by the way, is flawless chrome-wise and fitment-wise. So you've got a fantastic front end, a phenomenal side and an even greater back end on the car. So we have one more side to do for you. Okay, this is the last side. If we don't find anything here, there are no imperfections that we can detect on this vehicle. So we're back to our side marker lamp that has absolutely no patina whatsoever, nice clear lens in it. Uh, GT Sport striping again. All 10. The paint on this thing, I keep, I keep repeating this, you know, and I, I, I'm sorry, it's just the paint is so nice that I can't get over 
how somebody took a relatively inexpensive car because it, it's a Dodge Dart and, and, and did this to it. I mean, the paint on this thing, I wish we had the seventy and eighty thousand dollar cars that have this kind of a fit and finish on them. Trim around the back window, which by the way is also tinted, it's crystal clear. There's absolutely no imperfections in it whatsoever. Uh, sail panel the same way. The roof is a piece of wet white. I don't even, it's just, it's flawless. Uh, trim around the, uh, the white whiskers, just as fresh and clean as you could ever find. Wheel lip molding, I missed that. No dinkies whatsoever. Again, look at this fitment. Unreal. There is absolutely no deviation whatsoever on the fitment of these panels. Drip rail molding, none, zero. There's not a single mark, not an imperfection, tinted glass on the sides. Again, look at the fitment on this. Unreal. White whiskers, just as fresh as can possibly be. A mirror to match, and don't even look and see what this costs. Uh, Kevin will shoot me if he sees, but I, I can't drive a car that doesn't have a mirror on the right hand side, so I put a mirror on this side to match the adjustable mirror on that side. So they do match, there's not like a, a mismatch between the styles of the mirrors. This mirror looks just exactly like that adjustable one, only it's not adjustable for the uh, right hand side. Again, they trim around the um, wing area, absolutely flawless, can't get any better. There's no dinghies, no marks on the door anywhere, chrome on a handle, just as fresh as you ever have to find one. And again, look at this. This is just like saying, look. I wish everything fit like this. Boy, life would be so much easier. Pentastar designation on the uh, bottom of the fender where it should be on the right hand side, GTS, GTS 440, correct style uh, antenna. Trim around the front window. Unreal. Trim around the wheel well. Back to our side marker light up front. Amber in the front, red in the back. And you can see the fitment of this car. I don't want to sell it. <laughs> it's too nice. <laughs> I drove this thing for a couple days. It's an absolute blast to drive. The finish, the fitment, the look. Uh, just everything about this vehicle is phenomenal. I, I can't believe that someone has put that much effort into painting, fitting, finishing uh, a vehicle like this. I mean, it, it's a relatively inexpensive vehicle. And we have vehicles in this building from $20,000 up to over $200,000. And um, this car is the equal of anything that you will ever find fit and finish wise. I don't care who makes it, whether it's a Camaro or a uh, a Hemi Cornet or a, you know, whatever, whatever have you, a Mustang uh, uh, Mach 1, it, it's not going to be a better fit and finish than this car that you're looking at right here. Uh, it's an absolute blast to drive. <clears throat> it's not a correct car. Uh, in 1969, uh, they did put 440s in these darts. Um, those cars are very expensive. You won't buy one of those for, well, you're going to be about three, four, about four times of what you'll pay for this one. Uh, maybe even a little more than that. Uh, this thing's phenomenal. It does have air conditioning, it blows cold, tinted glass, black interior, bucket seats, console, which we'll see all that in a minute here. You can see the headers hanging out underneath it, uh, deep oil pan, uh, uh, that chrome type finish, ceramic coated headers on it, disc brakes in the front. I mean, the list just goes on and on. You, you'll have to take a look at Donnie's list of uh, uh, amenities on this car as far as the uh, tire size, uh, um, you know, engine, everything else. He'll give you some specs on everything. Uh, it's a car that's available here at Hanksters in Daytona Beach. And um, uh, we encourage everybody to come down and look at these cars uh, and, and do it in person, you know. And this is a car that anybody that sees this car and spends five minutes with it is going to be writing a check. Uh, it's a fantastic piece of uh, uh, automotive engineering. Um, it's, it's obviously uh, set up quite a few stages over what it left the factory as in 1968, uh, but it's a, it is at this point a 440 air conditioned dart. And uh, Joe is going to show you about 190 to 100 still photos of this vehicle, so you'll be able to go over this and see every aspect of this car. 
But if you can, come down and take a look at it in Daytona Beach, Florida, Hanksters. Okay, this is the uh, interior of our uh, 68 Dodge Dart 440 GTS. Fantastic car. Uh, again, the dashboard, we looked at it from the outside, but there's no marks or deviations or anything whatsoever on it. Um, glove compartment, uh, light in the glove compartment, just the way it should be. Uh, does have air conditioning, so this car does have controls for the air conditioning. It has an aftermarket radio in it, uh, Pioneer. I don't know if that's good, bad, or indifferent. Uh, there's the, gate, uh, the um, vents underneath the dash for the uh, uh, aftermarket air conditioning that does blow icicles in this car, by the way. Headliner, just as nice and fresh and tight as can possibly be. Uh, your sun visors, uh, nice and resilient, uh, stitching not coming loose on them. Day-night mirror in it that needs tightened. Have to tighten that guy up. Uh, wood grain steering wheel, tri-spoke on it, obviously, satin finish, but the wood grain wheel itself, uh, I don't, there's a tiny little hairline, I can't, I can feel it, but you really can't even get a fingernail in it or anything, a split right here. Other than that, I don't really see or feel any, uh, any imperfections in it. Dash is nice and clean, just the way it should be. You got a quadrant of gauges here. Uh, of course, your you know temperature and amp and oil and uh, gas, I'm telling your fuel. Um, speedometer, a vacuum gauge. That was an option on these vehicles. It does have a vacuum gauge in it. A remote control mirror, uh, GTS designation on the door, the way it should be, nice and clean and clear. You, can, you can't really see it, but the chrome uh, behind the uh, correct style molded, by the way, um, armrest. <clears throat> just as clean and clear as fresh as can possibly be. Window cranks the same way. The chrome on them is just as nice as you'd ever find. Uh, new window cranks in the back also. Armrests and trash trays in the back. And I wonder if there's a trash tray in here. Yep, trash tray here. Uh, Jesus. I, it has remote, I thought I saw something, there was a remote for the uh, uh, radio, uh, back seat, the, the upholstery on it and the upholstery on the front all matches just the way it should. You know what, there's no seat belts in this car. We're going to have to put front seat belts in it, but there are no seat belts in it right now. Definitely going to have to address that. We have to put a couple seat belts in the front of here for you. You'll need them. Um, the upholstery in this thing is nice and taut, you know, it's not caved in or anything. It's all been repadded, refoamed, and uh, completely redone. Front seats and the back seat. Uh, and it's just as nice as can be. It has the chrome uh, uh, GTS tile um, moniker in the center of the steering wheel. Nice uh, resilient horn button that works. Uh, door panels themselves, there's absolutely no scuffs or marks whatsoever in them. Either side and the back the same way. And normally on the top you'll see that this, uh, this area here usually has a lot of wear from people having their arms out the window or, you know, scratching it on the way out with a uh, bracelet or whatever have you. And these are not. These are just as fresh and clean as they were when they were uh, released by Chrysler in 68. Inside the door jams look like the car's new. It looks like it's never been driven. There's no uh, dirt or, or anything around the hinge area. It's just as clean and fresh as you'd ever hope to find. Loop pile carpeting in it. Uh, just the way it would have been from 68. The chrome on these uh, um, consoles usually has some deterioration, which by the way it has a uh, glove box there also. Usually has deterioration. This one has none. It's as fresh and clean as can be. Of course your shifter in the center here. Uh, another trash tray here or coin, whatever you want to do with it, put coins in I guess. Um, Car's just new inside. Uh, dome light functioning as it should. You saw the one in the glove box also is working. This car is uh, it, a, a new 1968 Dodge Dart GTS with a 440 in it. It's a phenomenal car and um, it, it's available here at Hangsters. You, if you really need to take a look at this car. Uh, I can't believe how nice this car actually is. The fit, the finish, everything on it. I wish we had every car like this. I wish we did. By the way, it has all new rubbers on it. These are all resilient as can be, and you can tell they're fresh. So there's not going to be any water leakage problems whatsoever. 
fantastic interior. Okay, we're in one of my favorite cars. Hopefully nobody will buy this so I can keep it for a while. Um, 1968 Dart, and everything on this thing is just exemplary. Uh, the, the side view mirror is adjustable and it works remote. And we have one on that side too. If Kevin finds out how much I paid for that, it'll probably throw a fit. Uh, but we have a right hand one that matches the one on the left. We have air conditioning. Let's see here. That works. And it's blowing icicles already. This is a good air conditioning system, and this thing really works well. Very well. Very well. Okay, we'll shut it off. Uh, gauge is working. You see we have a quarter of a tank of fuel. Um, the um, uh, amp meter is working just like it should. Uh, oil pressure is nice and high just the way it should. And we just started it, so the temperature is just starting to creep up a little bit. It has a vacuum gauge in the center here and it has a uh, speedometer over here. We have a turn signal that's just beating itself to death over here on the left hand side and one over here on the right doing exactly the same thing. So the turn signals do function as they should. We have a horn that works. Figure out where the wipers are. Let's try that. Huh. I dare it. Wipers aren't working. We're going to have to fix the wipers. Hmm. I didn't drive it in the rain yet. I know the radio works. Devin just had the radio on and it does function. It's a, uh, what is it, Devin? A Pioneer uh, sound system in its CD changer. And it does work and it has a remote. Devin was just playing with it and it does function. So everything works as it should except for the wipers. So just don't drive it in the rain. Or we'll probably fix it. Okay, you can see the speedometer is working as it should. We're going a little over 40 mile an hour. Here's 35 mile an hour zone. That go to steering wheel, goes down the road straight as an arrow. It does not deviate. Oops, you got to aim it the right direction now. Goes straight as an arrow. Uh, temperature coming up just as it should. Uh, brakes, no hands, stop straight as an arrow. Oh, the guy behind me is getting a little upset though. Nice tight car. Uh, it, it doesn't deviate at all. The steering is nice and precise on it. Uh, again, it goes down the road just the way you'd expect it to. Um, air conditioning blows cold in it. This is a very nicely fit and finished vehicle. Uh, somebody spent a lot of time and a lot of money putting this up to this degree of uh, perfection in a uh, muscle car. Uh, it, it's just a, it's a great vehicle. It runs well, it drives well, it stops well. It does everything it's supposed to. And it's a fit and finish that uh, I wish we had on everything. Fantastic car so far. We'll give it a little shot here, as long as there's not too much traffic outside here. We'll give it a little shot and make it uh, hum here a little bit. <clears throat> give it a little shot here. There's a truck going to pull out up here. I know he is. I'll wait for him for a second here. pulls like a freight train just like it should I gotta be careful this is a 35 mile an hour zone and uh, Volusia County just instilled the death penalty uh, and we caught one more time and I guess that's gonna be the end of the kid here um, nice running car it pulls well it drives well it's it, it, it just a just a fantastic vehicle it's a car you can take and use every day it goes down the road straight as an arrow it's stopped straight as an arrow uh, there's really absolutely nothing that you can find a negative on this car for. The air blows cold, there's not a shake, a shimmy around, a squeak, nothing. And the quality is just above just about anything else that you'd find. The paint, the fit, the finish, everything. It's a fantastic car. But don't buy it because I want to keep it here for I really like this thing. It's, but it is here at Hangsters in Daytona Beach, Florida. This is the undercarriage of our 440 GTS 1968 Dart. Uh, this is as new a vehicle as you will ever find in your entire life. Uh, fantastic piece of equipment. Uh, it does have a set of uh, uh, disc brakes in the front, new calipers, uh, two piston calipers. I wonder what the heck that's off of. That's unusual. 
with double piston calipers, uh, new ball joints, new tie rod ends, new steering uh, box, uh, new uh, pitman arm, new idler arm, uh, new engine. The um, engine has absolutely no leaks whatsoever. You can look around it and there's not a drip anywhere. It has a gear reduction starter on it, hiding up there inside the, uh, they're either ceramic coated or chrome plated. They look like chrome almost, headers, long tube headers on them. Uh, the um, torsion bars look to be absolutely brand new. Someone's replaced them with a heavier lifestyle torsion bar. Deep oil pan, this is at least a seven, probably an eight quart oil pan. Um, let's see what we got here. There's one mark in the oil pan here. Some rocket scientist uh, put a jack here and tried to jack it up by the oil pan and then must have realized he was in the wrong spot and then put it back where it was supposed to be. But it, it's not caved in on the bottom or anything, but there is a little bit of an indenture in the front part of the pan there. Certainly nothing that's going to cause a leak or anything. A deep uh, pan also on the uh, 727 tranny that's in this vehicle. Subframes and the drop down for the uh, fender skirting in the front, the uh, inner fender wheel wheel well uh, skirting, where they usually have a lot of uh, jack marks on them. This one has none that I can see at this point. No, nope, it's all clear. One little tiny jack mark here. Nothing on there. Eh, one little tiny one there you can hardly even notice. It may not even be one. Again, long tube headers that go into three and a half inch collectors that go into three inch, not two and a half inch or not two and a quarter, three inch primary pipes with an X pipe in the center. It's the same as a crossover pipe that Chrysler engineered way back when. Original style steel cooling lines going from the transmission to the uh, uh, radiator in the front. And it is an aluminum radiator in the front also. Uh, oil and filter was just done on the vehicle. The um, subframes are absolutely gorgeous in this vehicle. And the floor pans, where they uh, start toward the back of the vehicle, they are the original floor pans. There's absolutely no trauma, no distress whatsoever to them. There's not even a paint blister on these things anywhere. Uh, where they transition onto the uh, rocker panels, all original with their, their little crimp wells yet. Original uh, parking brakes still hooked up and functional. Uh, newer stainless steel, it appears to be uh, brake lines that are installed on this vehicle. Uh, heading toward the back. And wow, somebody's put an aluminum uh, fuel line on this thing and it's bent just the way it should be. You never want to run a fuel line straight. When you drop a hammer on something, all that mass of fuel goes back. Centrifugal force, uh, well, G-forces uh, force it back and it can cause a fuel starvation. You want to put as many bends in it as you possibly can, which is what they've done here. Uh, and it is an aluminum fuel line going toward the back, so that is a replacement. Uh, again, the floor pans, uh, just as nice and clean as you'd ever hope to find. New drive shaft. Uh, U-joint in the front, no leaks on the transmission whatsoever, even on the tail shaft or the uh, speedometer here, absolutely none. Three and a half inch collectors going into three inch primary pipes with an X-type, same thing as a uh, crossover pipe that Chrysler engineered way back when. Uh, it gives it a lot better flow and it actually quiets the exhaust system down substantially by doing that. Uh, again, there's three inch primaries going the whole way back into two huge uh, Dynamax mufflers, under chassis mufflers. Floor pans are totally undisrupted, uh, no deterioration whatsoever, absolutely zero, none. Uh, subframes in the back where your torque boxes are in the front part of them, there's no uh, distress whatsoever, no jack marks. Got to be one somewhere. I can't find any though. I don't know where they jacked this thing up, but. Nah, here, there's one right here, a little tiny one, and one right here. I knew there had to be a marker somewhere through the years. But the torque boxes, uh, again, just as clean and clear as you'd ever want to find. All your little rubber plugs in the floor pans are still the original plugs and still intact the way they should be. U-joint uh, new in the front of the drive shaft. U-joint new in the rear of the drive shaft. Also, the um, <coughs> rear end of this thing is an eight and three quarter heavy duty Mopar rear in it. Um, I don't know what the ratio is. I know it's a little higher gear ratio. It's made more of as a highway gear than it is a drag race gear, but uh, it really doesn't need too much for it. That 440 will make it do whatever you want it to. 
The uh, springs have a great curvature on them. They almost look like a set of super stock springs when you first look at them with the curvature that they have. Uh, great looking set of springs. New shocks in the front, new shocks in the back. And uh, again, with these springs, they don't need any help or anything, so there's no air shocks or anything on it. All new uh, uh, brake hardware uh, for the rear here, our stainless line that comes back. Uh, let's see. Drum brakes in the back. Uh, heavy duty drums in the back. Of course, we've got our four piston uh, um, calipers in the front. Um, three inch the whole way. Can you believe that? It, somehow they managed <coughs> to fit three inch diameter exhaust pipes uh, in this vehicle, not have them hit. And I know they don't hit because I drove this thing for a few days. Um, but anyway, it transitions out of the Dynamax muffler into three inch tailpipes that go into the correct style. Uh, stainless exhaust uh, tips that go out for 1968. New gas tank in it, new straps, uh, new fuel sending unit. Uh, there's no marks or indentures whatsoever on the um, uh, spare tire well that's in the back of these vehicles. The uh, tabs are still evident in the drop downs on the quarter panels. This car has so much originality it's spooky. I mean it's unbelievable how something like this age could still retain this much of its originality. The uh, piece that goes across the back to tie in your two subframes is uh, undisrupted. No one's hooked a chain to it through the years to drag this guy backwards uh, for any reason. The floor pans still appear to be all original and, and just as nice and fresh and clean as can be. Um, you're looking at a absolutely gorgeous leak oil pan for the uh, tranny and the engine. Uh, leak free also if you look at it right now. It doesn't mean it will be that way two years from now, but right now there's definitely no leakage whatsoever uh, on the drive line of this vehicle or any type of fluid. Um, the, uh, the vehicle is just an exemplary uh, piece of uh, engineering. I don't see anything at all that's uh, out of place underneath it uh, or anything that's actually ever been replaced underneath it. Everything appears to be original. Uh, if it has been done, it's been done with such precision that uh, um, it's probably as good or better than they did at the factory, but I really believe it to be all original. It, uh, it shows everything uh, to be original underneath here, and certainly not even a paint blister anymore. This is a fantastic vehicle. It runs fantastic. It looks great. The paint is exemplary on it. You look at the undercarriage, and it's as nice an exhaust system that you'll ever see on this vehicle. Uh, everything on it has been replaced as far as wear items go, and this is an absolute fantastic car. Um, I used it for two days. Uh, it's available here at Hankster's in Daytona Beach, Florida, and I don't want to sell it, but it is available, so if somebody buys it, they're going to take it off of me.